Hi, Wesley. Hello, everybody. I'm always lost. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Can you tell us about when you deep mind probe ETs? Yes, I can. Okay, so when I deep mind probe um, ETs, it's very weird only because um, it feels like they're just all over the place, right? So these, these ETs, when I deep mind probe them, um, either they're, they're either like really creepy, no lie, I'm sorry. They're either really creepy or they're kind of like, um, they feel like beings that hold a lot of knowledge and a lot of um, spirituality. It almost feels like I probe and everything is like moving all at once. It's very hard to explain. Um, but like when I probe ETs, I feel a little uncomfortable only because they creep me out. Okay. I, I didn't really, um, interact with ETs before I came to Farsight. And so just being here and, you know, probing them and feeling how they feel, it feels very foreign. It, it almost feels like something that's not comprehensible. So but it feels weird at the same time. Like now it's like I can be out in public somewhere and I'll feel that feeling. Like I'll feel that feeling of an ET and I'm like, ain't no way there's not an alien right here. Okay. That dude's right behind me. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we got. Hi from California. Hello. Hello. Of course. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I would. I think it would be worse. If it's a human mind, you know. At least humans, I know what they're they're going through. Like, I can relate to a human being. Okay, I can't relate to no freaking alien. I do. I do something else. Different dimensions. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You guys are so nice. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I watched your recent video blog about your encounter with the blue lady. Ooh, thank you. Um, have you ever encountered her or anything like her since? Have you gained more insight into where we are going? Um, ever since I saw that blue um, lady, uh, I have not seen her since. Um, but her energy, I feel like, still flows through me. And it's very... It's just something that, honestly, I feel like changed my perspective on life. It was like I wasn't really someone who who believed in a lot of these things that I see now before I came to Farsight. And like now that I'm here, I feel like I'm going through a whole awakening um, in front of you guys. And so it's very cool to experience and see. I didn't really deal with aliens or care for them before I came to Farsight. Um, and um, that's all like really weird to me too. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Courtney! Courtney! I'm sorry, how do I scroll through these comments? Well, you can't. You oh, I can't? Check. If they scroll past, oh. then you just lose them. Just Dang! Don't ask them again. Okay, okay. Again. Okay. Um, there's a lot of ETs in Los Angeles that look slash are human. You know, this, read them loud so they can hear the question because they're having trouble following the questions also. I got it. I read it out loud. Um, let's see. Can I describe what the blue lady's hair looked like? Okay, so her hair was like an afro, um, but not an afro because her hair was the cosmos. So when I tell you it was like a blue lady with um, she had a third eye and, you know, her regular eyes and her hair was like just the cosmos. So just imagine if I didn't have hair here and I had just like stars and planets and all that stuff just kind of moving around all at once. That's literally what I saw in pitch black. Um, let's see. Margaritas. <laughs> 
I'm not gonna lie. I love these margaritas. <laughs> um, what is it like deep mind probing Bashar? Okay, so when I deep mind probe Bashar, I didn't even um, know who he was, to be honest. So when I deep mind probed him, it was very weird because it's like I was hearing his voice, but I was also hearing someone else's voice there. And it's just like, it was really hard to um, differentiate and comprehend what all was going on. Cause I was like, I don't know if this dude is like weird or if he has like a mental thing or someone's talking to him, but it literally felt like he was talking to, or not he was talking to, but like he had personal thoughts and then someone else's intrusive thoughts would come in and take over his thoughts. So it felt like his mind was kind of like a mumbo jumbo type of thing. Um, but that was really cool too. I really liked that um, session that we did over Bashar. I didn't really, and these are the things, it's like, I didn't even know aliens could like come into people's minds and do those sort of things. And so that was a whole eye-opening experience for me as well. It was really cool. I really enjoyed that project. <laughs> um, I want my hair like that. Yes, girl, get you some locks. <laughs> Did you discover this ability? How did you discover this ability of yours? Um, what ability? What ability are you talking about? Can you teach me how to do this? And is Jesus and Zeus the same person? I don't think Jesus and Zeus are the same person. Um, when I remote viewed Zeus, he felt like just like this disgusting human being. Honestly, he was just like he creeped me out. Um, when I remote viewed Jesus, it felt like I just felt really sad for him. And it felt like he was going through a lot at the time um and it's just it was two totally different people so i would say that they're not the same person um you got locks lock gang yes tell courtney that i still enjoy listening to his podcast on science fiction and politics i will totally tell him that um what do you mean use for protection Have you ever remote viewed the distant future of Earth? I've never remote viewed the future of Earth, honestly. Um, <laughs> what was your scariest remote viewing? Was Jesus an extraterrestrial? I'm going to say Jesus was not an ex extraterrestrial. When I probed him, um, it felt like just a human being and it felt like someone who was just going through a lot. And I can't really describe because um, I'm really bad at putting my thoughts into words. So I can say that when I probe aliens, it feels like I'm probing robots and I'm probing things that like have no soul. Um, and then when I probed Jesus, you know, it's like I, I felt his pain and I felt the things that he went through. And it's just I, t I, would, I would not say that he was an extraterrestrial. Um, gosh, there's so many questions. And assuming he protects me to see there's free lessons on Farsight. Yes, there are free lessons on Farsight. Um, do you or Courtney give lessons on RV? How do I sign up? Um, um, I don't give lessons on remote viewing. I don't really have the time to, so I don't do that. But I know um, Princess Aziz and maybe Trudy do. Um, hi, Kamaya is aliens that Carlos ca Castaneda reported, maybe? I have no idea about that part. Okay. Uh, hey, England, how's it going? How did you get started in remote viewing? Oh, okay. So how did I get started in remote viewing? Um, long story short, I was just like on the internet and I kind of was like looking at certain things and I kind of ran into like Princess and Courtney and it was like they kind of introduced me to those things. I had no idea what remote viewing was before I came to Farsight. So I came in with a open mind and an open heart. And um, I had no idea what was going on. Like my first like week of training, I was just remote viewing and, and finding things at the target. And 
it was just like the weirdest thing ever, the weirdest thing ever, what remote viewing was. And now that I do it on a regular basis, it's just like, it's great and it's amazing. And I really um, enjoy it. And it's helped me open my mind to everything else that's going on in the world. Uh, I wouldn't say I was closed minded before remote viewing, but I was definitely not as open minded as I am now. So remote viewing has definitely changed my life for the better. I've tried to show everybody in my life what I do for a living. And it's just like, it's beautiful. Um, here's so many questions. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, your personal development remote viewing. I can't read these. Oh, I can go back. Courtney's wrong. Let's see. Did I find remote viewing? So Michael Finner, Finnerty, Finnerty, I'm sorry if I'm saying your name's wrong. Um, did I find remote viewing easy to learn? No. When I tell you that remote viewing was hard and I wanted to give up halfway through, that's the truth. And um, it took everything in me to keep going with remote viewing, but I had to find a love for it. And I really do love remote viewing and I love what I do here at Farsight. And I wouldn't want to have it any other way. Um, oh, I like this question. Captain Kimchi, does cannabis promote or inhibit <laughs> or inhibit um, remote being skills? I would say that it doesn't um, inhibit or promote anything. I think that, you know, it's not for everyone. And I personally don't like to be um, in a different headspace while I remote view. Sometimes it's it's a little bit easier because my mind's not running um, and thinking consciously about everything that's going on. But I I wouldn't say it does anything greater or less than for remote viewing. Um, Jesus probably said others worship him. Drugs are not good. Drugs are not good, guys. No drugs. Can you remote view our future together? <laughs> Possibly. Um, what is your favorite remote viewing project? Ooh. I would say my favorite one was the was Jesus only because um, just to feel like how he felt in that time. I'm very much so an empath. And so that one hit me hard. I was like, I feel really bad for this guy. And I feel like he doesn't really deserve the things that are happening to him. And um, I can't believe like how these people feel towards him. Um, and like the whole time while I'm remote viewing, you know, I don't know what I'm seeing here. So I just, I'm just feeling really bad about everything that's happening and then once Courtney told me um what I was remote viewing I was like wow that hit home because I've never been um a really religious person um but that definitely again opened my mind to things that people have been through in the past and things that people don't believe were real but have happened and I experienced that for myself and so I can say that that one was really hard and that one almost made me cry. That one almost made me cry. Um, that one that I just did. I do so many projects, guys, that it's hard for me to remember exactly which ones, but I followed someone's soul and I think it just got published. Um, but I also like encountered some sort of extraterrestrial there and I was following souls and it felt like people were being um, played with and their minds were being like turned into mush or something. I can't remember exactly which project it was, but I just did it. And I was, um, when I was remote viewing it, I literally felt sick to my stomach and I felt like whatever they were doing to these people, like I can't get behind. It was like, mm. Even thinking about it now like, makes me very uncomfortable. Um, if you guys know what I'm talking about, then you do. But I think we followed someone's souls and I just, it's hard. It's hard. Remote viewing is hard and it's hard on my, on my person. Um, some aliens have souls. Maybe they do. I don't know. The ones I remote view, to me, they feel like robots and empty people. Uh, I haven't seen the edge of space, Mr. 
pretty rich. Have you seen the edge of space? Um, are you an extraterrestrial goddess? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> um, let's see what else is here. Is it possible to remote view the inside and underneath the dome of the rock? It might be, to be honest. I feel like anything is possible to remote view. That's something that you have to, of course, ask Courtney because he's the one who gives out the projects and whatnot. Um, is Courtney looking for people to train? As far as I know, not right now. Um, Princess is training people, Aziz, and um, maybe Trudy. Not really sure on Trudy, but Princess and Aziz are definitely training people. Could you please tell us your personal development story and remote viewing skill? Yeah, um, when I first started to remote view, it was really hard because I had no, no clue what I was doing and like no clue what was going on. And so I just kind of depended on Courtney for the most part. Um, and really, it takes a lot of trust in your intuition and in your higher self. And that's something that I had to learn how to do. Um, I don't, I didn't really trust my, my intuition. And so remote viewing, um, at the beginning was really freaking hard. It was like, I felt like it was kind of weird and I felt like it wasn't real and I felt like I was just making things up. But then it's like, how can I make all these things up? But everything's there and, and everyone's finding the same stuff as me, you know? And so it's just now it's now it's like I can't not trust my intuition. Now it's like when I remote view, the first thing that I hear, I write that down because it has to be right. You know, that's the whole thing about remote viewing. You have to trust the the feelings that you get the first time. Because if you start second guessing things, then your conscious mind can come through and start making everything up. Okay. Your conscious mind can come through and tell you you're in a whole other place because you felt like something happened. And so you'll start making things up. And, um, that's just something that I had to learn over the years. I had to really trust my intuition and trust that what I'm seeing and what I'm feeling is there and, and back it up with confidence. You know what I'm saying? You, you gotta, you gotta stand behind what you say uh, and what you feel and what you see. So it's kind of how I feel. Let's see. Oh my gosh, I'm so behind on these comments. Nice turquoise earrings. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks. Yeah, Jesus. I don't think Jesus was killed because of his skin color. I think he was killed because um, he wanted to speak on behalf of God. And a lot of people back then were not having that. So that's just my personal opinion, though. You know, y'all do you. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are freaking amazing. I love you guys. <laughs> uh, how many lives have you lived plus your own? Oh, that's a good question. Okay, so past lives. I'm honestly, let me be honest with you guys. Um, I've only experienced one of my past lives. And in that past life, it felt like I was, um, this is all I can remember because it was a vision that I had. But in my past life, I was, still um a woman i was still black um and it felt like i was kind of along like during um like those slavery eras because all i all i saw when it when i saw my past life was that i was like calling for people and i was running through some sort of street or field and there was fire in my face and flames and i was definitely being chased um but all i can say is that i was a woman and i was black and that's what I was in my past life. And I definitely was being like followed or something. It was really cool. Uh, it was like the first thing I've ever experienced in my past life. So first I thought it was like crazy, <laughs> but now I know that like, that's definitely something that um, I experienced. Have you remote viewed Coral Castle in Homestead, Florida? I haven't. Um, I, ha I don't remote view outside of Farsight because I have a lot of projects that I do at Farsight. So I don't really do work outside of Farsight. Everything that I've remote viewed um, is on our channel and on our streaming platform. Um, 
them a rock is simply a new year and nothing else to it. They worship a rock because it fell from the sky. Oh, well, look at y'all teaching me new things. I didn't know that. I did not know that. Um, are you a water sign? Yes, y'all. I'm a cancer. I just had a birthday. I'm sorry. My birthday was three days ago. So I'm 24 now. And it feels great to make it to another year. And I can't wait to have another year of no viewing at far Um Did you have any entities follow you after remote viewing at some point? Um, I'm going to say yes. I, after, man, I wish I could remember these projects, guys. I'm, I'm so sorry that I can't remember them off the top of my head. But that one project that I was talking about earlier when I felt like, um, no, that was a totally different project. What project was that? There was at some point in my video where like, I felt like um, the, the, the ET was in the room with me and he was in my head and I was probing him and I was trying to figure out, you know, how he was feeling. And as I was probing him and feeling out how he was feeling, I could hear a voice tell me, you know, leave me alone, get out of my head, go away. And like that part creeped me out. Um, and then after that, for a good like month, I would say, I felt like, I was hearing voices and I was feeling things. When I tell you guys, I was sitting in my house and the energy would sit still and I would hear like a ringing in my ear and something telling me to look in a certain direction or something telling me that something's about to happen or something telling me that, you know, this is going on. And I was like, hmm, I don't know what's going on. When I, it's so hard to explain because this is all very new to me. This is all very, very new to me. And um, a lot of the times I, I don't, I personally don't know what's going on. I feel like, am I being followed? And, and do I feel these things? Uh, there's a lot of times right here ringing in my ears and I feel that, that energy of something else being in the room with me and I'll look behind my back, you know, and I'll, and I'll look in that general direction that I feel like, um, I'm hearing this voice from and it's just weird. It's weird. I can't really explain if I feel like I'm being followed, but a lot of the times I do feel like um, there's extraterrestrials looking, um, after me or looking over me, if that makes sense. Um, let's see what's going on in these comments. We see in World War III in the background. Oh no, no, we will comment on that. <laughs> um, when you view past the vent and aliens notice you, does the original vent now have you peering to them years ago? Okay, let me reread that just in case you guys didn't hear me. Um, googly third eye. <laughs> I like that. When you view a past event and an alien notices you, does the original event now have you appearing to them years ago? So this is a question that I actually asked Courtney when he told me that like a princess was remote viewing something and then someone else remote viewed and they could see her there. Um, but it's kind of like nothing changes. It's just that your energy and your kind of ghost person is there. So I think that they can like, people can see your, your little um, higher self kind of being there and floating there, but you know, physically you're not there. And so nothing really changes um, when it comes to the events that happened. Yeah. Okay. At Marlene, keep posting the question. It was great. Yeah, post the question again because I'm sorry I, I didn't see it. Um, have I ever seen nature spirits? You know that um, that blue lady that I saw in the cosmos while I was um, astral projecting? I feel like she was everything in anything. So I feel like she very much so could be a nature spirit. I feel like I met some sort of nature spirit or everything spirit. I'm, I'm telling you guys, it felt like 
the weirdest thing ever. It was the weirdest thing ever. Um, but personally, like a specific nature spirit, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. Does your higher self look in appearance? How does your higher self? God, I cannot read. How different does your higher self look in appearance from your human self? Um, I think that my higher self kind of looks very much so like me. Um, Because I think, you know, we're all made in its image. And so it's kind of like your higher self does look like you. And I think it looks like you whatever you want it to look like. Um, so when I saw that that blue lady, she she felt like my higher self. And I wouldn't say she looked like me, but she look, um, she kind of resembled me with her facial features and stuff. Her hair was obviously not in locks, but, you know, there's that. Um, did the Anunkai... Anunnaki designing humans. I have no idea, guys. I don't, I don't even know what an Anunnaki is. You know, y'all know a lot of things that I don't know. And so I like that you guys are telling me things that I don't know. Um, how do you differentiate between remote viewing and imagination? That's hard. Okay, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. There's a lot of times where I've, I genuinely feel like I'm making things up like the, the the thoughts that come to my head. I'm like, you know, this obviously this can't be happening. I'm going to write it down. I'm going to say that's what's happening here. But it feels like I'm making those things up. It's very it's very hard to differentiate between your imagination and remote viewing. And that's why remote viewing is so hard. Um, that's why a lot of people, you know, their results aren't really conclusive um, because at the end of the day, remote viewing is you trusting your intuition and you trusting your higher self to give you the information that you need. So that information that you you feel from your higher self, you have to trust that, whether it's your higher self or your imagination. You know, you, you tell you tell yourself that that's your higher self. Um, and honestly, that's what I do. And, I'm you know, for the most part, my, my work still comes out very accurate. And so I would say that um, don't even tell yourself that you're imagining, you're imagining things that this is imagination. You know, tell yourself that that's what's there. That's what you're seeing. That's what you're remote viewing. And that will help you gain more confidence, um, in your remote viewing skills and in your, um, results that you get. Sorry if I say, um, a lot of times too. <laughs> ah, see, I take that probe for, <laughs> Oh, you guys are funny. What's the worst thing you think is going to happen in the next 50 years? I think the worst thing that's going to happen is, honestly, I feel like we're going through the worst thing right now. You know, COVID, um, people fighting for their rights to be human beings and not be, you know, seen as else then. I feel like that's a lot what's going on. I feel like there could be some sort of... Um, I don't want to say war because I feel like we won't really get to the point of war, what's going on right now. But I do think that we'll get past that um, or not past that. But I do think we'll get somewhere near that, especially things are definitely I feel like going to get a little ugly or and like I don't want it to get uglier. But I, I, I do feel that way. Um, let's see what's going on here. Do I think some UAPs could be remote viewers? Can you please, Christopher, tell me what a UAP is? <laughs> um, sorry, guys. I want to see Courtney do a remote viewing session. You know, I feel like Courtney is all remote viewed out. He's told me that he's been remote viewing for quite some time. And so I think that um, his time is now mostly behind the camera and editing. I don't know if Courtney will ever remote view anything for you guys. I will certainly ask and I will certainly be very persuasive. <laughs> uh, 
I feel like autism is a sort of evolution. We deal with the way of the world now. Hmm. I've never thought of that. I've never thought of that. The change DNA. I've never left the United States, y'all. Never left the United States. Um, our autism and Asperger's byproducts of alien genetic engineering are our own species. I honestly can't even answer that because I do not know. Um, I don't know. I feel like, yeah, I don't even want to answer that question. I'm sorry. Um, I love your work. Awesome. Can you give a bit of remote viewing advice with your high self? Um, you know, just the, all the advice I can give you is just to trust your higher self. It's all trust. And it's hard. Uh, believe me, it's hard. But just take what you receive as what it is. You know, don't try to look deeper into it while you're remote feeling. Don't try to make it something that it's not. What you saw is what's there. You saw a structure. You saw a structure. It's not the Capitol building. It's not... Um, you know, the Twin Towers is nothing like that. It's just a structure and that will help you um, keep your conscious mind from making things up. And, and you know, you just putting stuff down on paper that's not actually there. What do you do for spiritual projection to avoid astral harassment? I got no idea. <laughs> like, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I don't do anything for protection to avoid astral harassment. Usually when I astral project, like, nothing really bothers me. Um, I saw that one blue lady and that was it. That was it. I Other times I astral project, I go to, I specifically go to the mountains because they make me um, feel happy. And so I astral project with a purpose. Um, I don't really encounter anything outside of that. Have you ever dreamt about, ooh, I like that question, Antonio Hernandez. Have you ever dreamt about a remote viewing session you did either that day or some time ago? Um, there are some things that I do dream about. I dream a lot about the, um, the, what's that one I can't? think of right now it's like it's a reoccurring dream that I do have I do dream about the that one I was talking about earlier where we were following someone's soul and I felt like they were like messing with people's minds and stuff I had a whole dream that I was one of those people that they were like messing with and experimenting on and when I tell you I woke up, I woke up sweating, okay? I woke up nervous, okay? And I woke up, like, creeped out. Um, at that point, it was like, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to feel. It was, like, just the creepiest thing ever. And I will say that dreaming about my remote viewing sessions helps me cope. Um, because a lot of things that I experience, it, you know, it's hard for me to to cope with those things afterwards. Um, I try to push a lot of stuff that I remote view into the back of my mind um, because just experiencing those things takes a lot um, on the mind. And um, yeah, it's just, you know, I, I, I had a dream about that, though, that I was definitely being like messed with and played with and like... I was kind of like watching these things all unfold. Um, but, you know, it wasn't anything crazy. It wasn't crazy. I, I lived. <laughs> and, but it was really cool. And I actually had a good time in that dream, even though I was, like, creeped the heck out. Um, let's see. Let me get down to these questions that are coming up now. You might be a targeted individual, I'm not going to lie. I feel like it a lot of the time. I'm driving in the city, and I, I, I don't know where I hear this ringing. Um, guys, like, I don't know. I feel like I've looked at a terrestrial in its face, okay? There'll be times where, you know, I told you guys when I feel like everything stands still. 
and it's super quiet and I hear this ringing in my ears and something telling me to look over in a certain direction. It's happened at least three times since I've started working at Farsight, but all those things will happen and I'll look over at like a random person and they'll already be looking at me. They'll already be looking at me and they'll be staring me down. And I'm like, what is this person staring at? And why are they staring so hard? And why is their energy calling me? Um, and they and they look human, but they look a little off. I'm not going to lie. Like I looked at this lady one time and I tilted my head like, are you human? And it's like, we made eye contact for a good like three to five seconds before she finally just like looked away, like, like nothing faced her. Like we didn't just have a whole conversation in our minds. <laughs> but I feel like I am, I'm not gonna lie. I do not have any extraterrestrial friends, Ben. Heck no, I'm sorry. I, I extra, extraterrestrials are cool to me, but at the, at the same time, they, they genuinely creep me out. Um, have you ever acted as someone's guardian angel while dreaming, warlord? No, no, I haven't. Um, remote viewing is astral protection. Please protect yourself before you remote. Thank you. Um, can you ask princess if Moses was, or remote viewing Moses, she has a description of him asking the interest in the same person. You know, if I remember to ask princess that question, um, I will. I don't really see Princess anymore because of everything that's going on right now. We all kind of um, work from home, so. But I will ask her that question and see what she thinks. What size shoe do I wear? <laughs> Seven and a half. Um, <laughs> remote viewing is not astral projection. I, I, okay, I love that you guys are having a conversation. Um, I don't think remote viewing is astral projection. I've done both and remote viewing feels more like the things that I feel and experience. And when I tilt my head up, you know, I see that, that picture. Um, but astral projection is something that like, it feels like a dream, but I know exactly what's going on. Um, what project did I see the blue lady? Truth seeker, that is not a project. That is something that as I was, rem um, not remote viewing, as I was meditating before I was going to start a session, uh, at work, I was meditating and uh, I closed my eyes, you know, meditating, whatever. And I could feel myself breathing and that's when I started to astral project. That blue lady that I saw was an astral projection. Um, and after I, you know, encountered her, I came right back to my body, like right back. Oh, my eyes, I was at far sight, you know what I mean? It was really, really weird. It was really weird, but it was also really cool. Um, let's see, Bruna. What inspired you to work with Remote View? Um, like I said, I did not know what remote viewing was before I came to Farsight. I just met um, Courtney and Princess and Melina and they were all just like really cool people and they kind of explained to me what remote viewing was. I'm very much so into everything, um, spiritual, astral projection, meditating, all of that stuff. Those are all things that I already did and, and knew about, but I had no idea what remote viewing was. And so when I came to Farsight, um, and to Courtney about it, you know, I very much so thought that remote viewing was astral projection. When, when Courtney explained to me and I watched Princess's first videos and I was like, you know, what's going on here? I thought it was astral projection. Um, and then, you know, through over time, Courtney is like, no, that's not astral projection. Like it's to two totally different things. And now since I've been doing this for the past um, two years, it's definitely not the same thing. Um, and so nothing really inspired me to work with remote viewing. I just met really dope people who kind of showed me it and I, I practiced it for a couple months and I learned to love it and I learned to open my mind and accept it for what it was. And um, that's really just what inspired me to keep remote viewing. The thing that keeps me remote viewing is that all of this is just like the coolest thing to me. I'm sorry, it's like the coolest thing ever. And I just, I love what I do at Farsight um, and I love that I get to experience all these things and it's just amazing. They probably just think you're cute. <laughs> I don't think 
think some 90 year old lady thinks I'm cute. I'm sorry, guys. You, you could be right, but I don't know. I feel like, I feel like not. Um, oh my gosh, so many questions. Did the death trap project project? Wow. Don't judge me. Okay. Did the death trap project affect the way you look at death? Um, no, I'm going to say no, um, only because, you know, I always knew that we or I always believed that your soul is recycled and you always, um, you know, you go back to the, the main, the main place and you come back to earth. So I feel like, you know, death traps, I mean, yeah, it made me think of it differently. Like, why would they erase our minds and bring us back here and make us into slaves with, we're slaves with, um, free thought and the ability to make choices on our own and so it's kind of like i haven't looked at it differently i can say that i feel like it's still the same to me personally um <laughs> have you ever deep mind probe an animal no i haven't i haven't um does remote viewing wear on you emotionally yes mentally uh there's a lot of times where i feel like i just i can't do it anymore but i just push through it um and i just think it i have to meditate more and i have to tell myself that like you know i'm not actually experiencing these things um because otherwise it does there was a good moment of time where i felt like i didn't really you know feel like myself and i felt like it's, it's the hardest to explain, but I feel like I lost myself while I was remote viewing um, mentally and emotionally. So I will say that for me personally, um, it wears on me emotionally, Rid. Um, let's see, where did you get your earrings? I got them at this like crystal store by my house in Georgia. So it's not something you can get online. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I can feel your hug. Yes, I can. Thank you. Lucid dreaming. Oh, I love lucid dreaming. Um, most of the time when I'm lucid dreaming, though, I'm like, I'm doing some like crazy 007 running through the town type stuff. Um, I do like lucid dreaming. But I don't think it's anything like remote viewing or astral projection. You know, it's all its own. They're all their own things. Um, tell us more about the death traps some death traps so I guess just all I could think about when it comes to the death traps is that when I saw it I saw I felt like someone's soul was like you know leaving earth and it was leaving and it was floating away and they saw this light like this light like um fly sea lights and you know you you fly towards the light and this person was like oh yeah the light and they start drifting towards this light and then uh, when they got to that light it was like they came back to this planet as like a whole new being and so the death traps you know i don't again i don't really know like the detail details i just know what i saw and what i saw was just that they just taking people their souls and putting them back um and i don't know why they do that either um and it's the weirdest thing you know they want to use our souls as like they want us to kind of be like slaves to this planet. Um, I don't know, the death traps creep me out though. And I don't like to think about them because I like to believe that I don't have to come back here. <laughs> but um, those surely creeped me out. I'm not gonna lie. A lot of projects that we do like creep me out. Um, so yeah, I hope that answered your questions. I can't really tell you more about the, the death traps other than that. They take us and they bring us back here and they just want us to work to death and make them money and make them feel like they're these amazing beings. When remote viewing, are you just observing or can you affect the situation you are viewing? You are just observing. You can't go in there and um, affect anything. You know, some, some beings that are there can feel that you are there and you are probing them. But outside of the events that happen, you have no, no control over that. Um, my favorite food? Kettle corn, popcorn, or mac and cheese, okay? 
Those are those are my favorite foods. <laughs> Uh, why do you always reference Spongebob? Because, guys, Spongebob was my childhood. And so when I think of abstract things, I think of Spongebob, right? Because it's just like Spongebob, the most craziest things happen in Spongebob. And like, is that a coincidence? I don't know. But I do think of Spongebob for some reason a lot of the times. And I feel bad for always referencing Spongebob. But it's just the first thing that comes to my mind. It's always Spongebob and like Game of Thrones. <laughs> um, how long does it take for you to leave your body when you're trying to astral project? I'd say like 15 to 20 minutes. Um, beautiful Squidward. <laughs> The aliens do be looking like beautiful Squidward, guys. Like the the the, the uh, I feel like um, ETs have very strong facial features and not a whole lot of fat on their face, and so they look like beautiful Squidward, like snatched. <laughs> um, are you able to comment on the kill shot, Patty? I don't. I'm sorry, I don't remember that. Uh, my shoulders and my parents have ET content and they want to meditation. Almost <laughs> stimulate. That was funny. Your comment's hilarious. ET com contacted you once during meditation. <laughs> That's funny. Um, John, I just had a birthday three days ago, so I am now 24. Um, 24. Thank you. Thank you, Ken Harrington. I appreciate your comment. Um, let's see what all else is going on here. Do you have a grandma or auntie that watches over you? I don't. Um, all of my grandparents and aunts are alive, so they're all here. Uh, what's the most dangerous entities you have come across remote? We have come across during remote viewing. Um, oh my gosh, I love kettle corn. Sorry, Texas. I freaking love kettle corn. Yes. Um, <laughs> The most dangerous entity that I have come across during remote viewing is definitely that um, ET that was in my head um, while I was remote viewing him and I was trying to see like what he was thinking and he was telling me to get out of his head and like I would hear the right answer and then out of nowhere I would hear something like that's the complete opposite and I'm like how do I hear two things at once that are not right and it, I, that's when I realized that like the first thing that I heard was right but then this dude is literally telling me something else so that I can't be right because um, he doesn't want everyone to know what's going on and that person I feel like definitely followed me home because ever since that remote viewing I've literally felt like the energy around me is different and like the, when I like encounter like weird beings and stuff that energy feels like the same and it feels like sometimes like someone's sitting with me like in my car and it feels like hit like their energy um it's very hard to explain but I do feel like that one where that dude was uh, in my head that guy definitely followed me um are you familiar with Enkai and Enlil gosh totally terrible at these names, but I'm not. I don't know those names. I'm sorry. Um, the uncomfortable truth over the comfortable lie takes a lot of courage. Thank you for staying courageous. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, hi, Andy. I've never been to Scotland. I, I see pictures, though, and it looks really beautiful. And thank you. Um, do you believe we're living in the end of times? I do not. I don't. I think that we are living in a um, transitional period, so I do not think that we're living at the end of times. I do think, you know, stuff's about to get a little real, but I don't think that, like, anything, like, super crazy is going to happen. Because, um, you know, I feel like when things first started happening, I was very nervous. Uh, but now I feel very calm, and I feel very, like easy going and I know that whatever is coming next is going to be an amazing and beautiful thing and we are definitely um, changing things for the better now. Hi guys from the UK. Hey, how's it going? Um, what stuff is going to get real? Just like, you know, stuff that everything that's going on right now. I don't know if you guys know, but like the, the government has like been denying aliens for like forever. And then they just leaked all of their um, old 
uh, research and stuff proving that like they've seen extraterrestrials and stuff and they leaked a lot of things on remote viewing like their um, intellect on remote viewing and stuff and so it's just like I feel like when things are going to get real I mean like the world is going to open their eyes and people are going to start seeing things differently and people are going to have to open their minds and broaden their perspectives um, to really enjoy this world for what it is so i guess that's kind of what i mean when stuff's gonna get real just like everything with the government with the government and with people living like their own lives and when it comes to astral projection and remote viewing like a lot of people that i know didn't really believe in none of this stuff until i started doing it and i was showing them what i was seeing and now they all open their eyes and they all know what's going on now and it's just a massive wake a massive um awakening you know 2020 is the year of perfect vision and i believe that i believe that this year people are going to open their minds they're going to open their hearts and they're going to open their like perspectives and really um this world is not going to be the same after 2020 that's what i believe et basically forced images into my head all i could do was grab the bed beneath me and and fright until it was over dang i'm sorry that happened to you um, have you tried remote influencing? I have not. Um, do you close down your chakras when you're doing, when you're finished a session? Um, I don't, I don't close my chakras, honestly. Uh, I do work really hard to keep them very open and so I don't purposely close them on purpose. Um, do you believe you're living in the end of being single? <laughs> uh, you guys are funny. Um, uh, crazy horse. I, I don't do remote remote viewing sessions outside of Far Sight right now. Um, I'm mostly just focused on my work here, and doing the best that I can here for Far Sight and for Courtney. Um, so I would say, you know, if you did want to hire someone for a remote viewing session, I would say hit up Princess or hit up um, Aziz for that. Have you seen dragons? I have not. Um, your alien stalker is going to get a green card. <laughs> we might already have one as far as I'm concerned. Uh, um, Ronald Craig, have you ever thought of working with David Paul? Polity, polities from 411. Uh, I have not. I don't even know who that is. I'm sorry. Um, what are your views on magic? I love magic. I think it's real, and I think that anything that you say and do, and you put that energy behind it, um, that's magic. You know. So anything. Anything you're trying to bring towards you or put out in that world, if that's the energy that you put out there, um, I feel like that's magic, and I, I, do, I do believe in magic. Open eyes, different perspectives, 2020 vision. I like that. I like that. Um. <laughs> How do you find the target? How do you know where to go when you're remote viewing? Um, so really, you don't know. I do a whole session, and um, I'm either there or I'm not. And Courtney will tell me if I'm right. If I'm not there, then he'll be like, you're not on target. You need to do this again. Um, and I'll do it again, and I'll be on target. So there's that. Um, is Trump going to unveil his face on Mount Rushmore? Uh I hope not, but I'm not going to answer that question. Um, have you ever seen lotus flowers in your chakras? I have. Um, love always wins, yes, yes. 
you need to brush up on some conspicuous stuff. 411 is quite strange. I mean, yeah, maybe. There's just a lot that goes on in the world and in my life, and it's hard to keep up with like everything that's happening. So if you want to, you know, send me some information um, on like my Instagram or something, you could totally do that, and I would read up on 411 because it sounds interesting. Um, <laughs> Cyberman, I see you out here. I see you, and I see your comment. <laughs> Um, let's see, let's see. Princess Janae is magic. Princess is magic. I love princess. I have never looked at the Travis Walton inter, um, incident. Where are all the positive non-creepy ETs? Okay, cool. Um, I have, I'm, I'm going to be honest, there's like two, maybe two out of every ET that I've remote viewed um, that did not creep me out. And that actually when I remote viewed them, they gave me more information than what I was looking for. They definitely opened their minds to me and they opened um, their perspectives and they, they, they really showed me what I was there to see. Um, so I don't think that all aliens are like these creepy, like weird beings. Um, but I do think that like 95% of them are. Um, and I have come across some that were really, um, they didn't creep me out and they felt cool and they felt like they were just there to kind of um, be there and they didn't really do a whole lot wrong. See, do you feel any chakras above your crown chakra? I'm gonna say no. Okay. Got four minutes, guys. Four more minutes. How long have you been remote viewing? I've been remote viewing for two years now. Do you still feel like you have more to learn? I feel like I have so much to learn on remote viewing. Like remote viewing, when I think of um, the people who really inspire me to remote view, I do think of Princess because Princess has been remote viewing for what, six years now? Um, and she makes it look so easy. I'd be remote viewing and I'm like, how the heck is all this just coming so easy to you? And she's just like, you know, I've been I've been doing it for a long time and I'm just so amazing. And I'm like, I know you are, but <laughs> so I mean, I do think that Princess is very, very good at remote viewing and I want to learn from her how to be a better remote viewing. And it's something that you're always learning about because you there's something there that you've never experienced before. Every time you remote view, um, if you remote view different targets, there's new feelings, there's new um, subjects, and there's new things that you have to experience. So I don't think I'm like this uh, guru in remote viewing, but yeah. Thanks for that question. Um... <laughs> Do you enjoy the tax assign? I do enjoy the um, the most of the projects that we do. Um, has Corny ever made you redo a remote viewing target? No, he hasn't. Um, you know, usually when you get it right, you get it right, and so he won't make me redo it unless it's just like completely completely wrong, and uh, that hasn't happened since like I was really first started like training here at Farsight. Princess is just really fast at it. She is. She's freaking, she's amazing. Um, what do you hope to have learned by next year? You know, I hope to be more um, faster at um, getting these hints and I don't know, I don't want to call them right now, but I just want to be faster at remote viewing. I don't want to sit there and like, yeah, that's happening and yeah, this is happening. I want to be able to probe and be like, yeah, that's happening. And this is happening. And we're going here. You know what I mean? I want to get better and faster and um, more accurate with my results. So that's that is something that I do want to, to learn. Um, <laughs> did your night change? the best 
My, um, Ray Taylor, my, my name doesn't really mean anything as far as I'm concerned. I think one time my mom told me my name was Hawaiian and it meant um, beautiful eyes, but she could have just made that crap up to make me feel better about myself. <laughs> um, who are the men in black? If you mean like the people that I see who look like they're like covered in all black, I honestly feel like they're either, um, I feel like they're just black people, you know? I feel like they, they're, they're, I, a lot of times I can't tell if people are wearing really, really thin clothing or like no clothes at all. And so when I see like all black people and I feel for their um, clothing, it almost feels like they're not wearing clothes. So it, I almost want to believe that they're just um, super melanated people. Um, that's a hard question. That is a hard question. And thank you guys. Thank you so much for sticking around and being so great. <laughs> Is there any way to learn this in the San Francisco Bay Area? I do not know. I do not know. I just know that we're here in Atlanta. Um... Oh, I'm freaking wrong. Men in Black, the group that tries to cover up ET information. I got no idea on that part. No idea. I'm sorry. Um... It's Will Smith. <laughs> oh God, that's hilarious. Do you have a time of day or night where remote viewing works better for you? I like to remote view um, like in the midday, like first thing in the morning, but definitely like around noon, I feel like uh, that's when everything is real calm and I feel good and I feel like I get the best results. The friendly aliens, are they humanoids? Yes, they are. The friendly aliens are humanoids. They look like humans. Um, but yeah, I guess that's all the time I have today, guys. And I really enjoyed your questions and the conversation that we had. And uh, I hope to come back soon. So I'll see you guys later. And thanks so much again. See you later. Bye-bye.